What's up, all y'all trickly bastards? Welcome back to It's 1700 Somewhere. As always, I am Athen. I'm Cameron, and I still don't have an opening sentence. <laughs> well, you should probably work on that. <laughs> Just a little bit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of some um, producer stuff. So if you could, please... Bring, oh God! <laughs> that happens every single time. All right, so every time I'm going to go ahead and do some of this uh, producer stuff. So if you can go ahead and hold the reins for me for a minute. All righty. So to start us off, I'm going to start by talking about a app for military veterans and all active duty military called Objective Zero. It provides a platform for other vets to get in touch with each other, especially if you're going through anything, uh, if you're depressed, if you have something on your mind, if you just want to connect with other veterans. It also has different connections for you to go through and find help, uh, find different ways to connect to people. I know yesterday I saw a way for veterans to actually get together and go fly fishing, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, they also help out with uh, posting job links, job descriptions. They have a way to contact uh, counselors, career counselors. Uh, if you want to get into a program to get yourself a service animal, uh, they have all the information there. I highly recommend you check it out. No, we're not getting paid for this. This is just something I am fond of. I have used the app for a while. Uh, it's very interesting to see where a lot of the veterans are posted around. It actually gives you a map and shows locations so you can connect to veterans that are in the area. If you do want to get with people nearby, you can contact people out of state. It doesn't matter. You can get a hold of anybody you want. You can even become one of the people that get contacted uh, if somebody is going through something. So check it out. Uh, you can find it in the App Store. Again, it's called Objective Zero. So after that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Ironically, our first conversation is actually about apps. <laughs> so I'm sending some invites for people to watch the show right now. I'll be... Okay. Well, the first story we have is about the Face app. Everybody's been using it. Everybody's been seeing it pop up on whatever social media platform you use. Facebook, Twitter, everything. It's I very... used it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll, I'll pop up my picture real quick. <laughs> old acting, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. That's an old. That is dismal as fuck, though. Look at that. <laughs> what am I, like 90? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, it's Santa Claus. <laughs> right? I was like, I saw that picture, and I was like, holy crap. A little bit. But, I mean, after so much milk and cookies, how, how good of a shape can you be in? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so, all right. Apples um, and happies. <laughs> apples and happies. What the hell? So let's give a couple let's give a couple shout outs here right now. We've got um, watching us. We got Justin Snodgrass from um, the, over there at WO Radio. Um, Thomas Brickner's watching. We also got Annie Marie Hennicutt. She checked in, but she had to go pick up her kids. We got Julie Little Spud Romaine. She's watching from down under in Australia. Welcome. Oh, wow. Thank you for watching. And then we got Mickey Severson with us also. So thanks y'all for watching. Thank y'all for. Review and oh, and Carl Loomis just joined in. All right, so continue on with where you were at there. All right, so as I was saying, it's been flooding absolutely flooding social media. With that, the concern is because it was a Russian created app, people are concerned with their information getting out. Because I know I don't personally read every single little notification you get with downloading an app and accepting the privacy policies and stuff like that. But apparently it allows for, and I quote, perpetual, irrevocable, non-exclusive, royalty-free, worldwide licensed people's names, photos, and likenesses. So with that being said, your photos can get out there. If you use the app, you're not going to get paid if somebody decides to say, hey, we're going to create a commercial and we're going to use... Athens old man photo for a Santa Claus commercial. <laughs> He's not going to get any money. They download. They have access to download all your photos on your uh, device. With that being said, it also looks like it was not being stored on uh, Russian servers, but American servers. Yep. Well, 
And something I noticed with that is one thing they were talking about is as soon as you download the app and you open it up, it starts uploading every single picture you have inside your um, your photo gallery up to the servers. And then also, I didn't notice it the first time I used the app when I took that picture of me, but like the other night I was went and took a picture of my son um, with it. And when I was doing that, it popped up with a notification saying that every picture that you take through the app um, is actually uploaded to the server as well. So that's something you want to look out on that as well. So, yeah, be careful. But uh, Charles E. Schumer actually called for an investigation with the FBI and the Federal Trade Commission to actually go in and try and mitigate all risks because the concern with this is not all privacy policies are cut and go. They're, they're extremely fine print. They even stated this in the article that they are broad spectrum, they're very difficult to read, and you should not rely on fine print to protect your privacy. And they go into saying what you are seeing is uh, the reaction to the fact that we don't have enough laws in place to protect people from companies getting your data. I mean, we all, you go and look up something on Amazon, uh, let's say you look up a uh, phone case, or you go Google something, and the next thing you know, you're timelines getting flooded with advertisements for oh this is on sale this is on sale so Did, your protection is getting access very easily yeah well and like that shit happens when you like you could just be sitting here talking about some shit like you know sitting in your house not on a phone or anything like not googling anything talk about needing some fucking diapers or wanting a certain type of I beer need your toilet seat yeah <laughs> and 30 so seconds like, later, you go look on Facebook, and there's a fucking ad. <laughs> for a toilet seat. Yeah. I, that's happened to me before. I was talking about a beer, and I went on Facebook, and there was ads for the beer all over Facebook. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, be careful. It, it, it's, it's sad to see that it's coming to the point where you almost need a lawyer just to download an app nowadays. Right. And, it, I mean, that's going to get expensive for one, and two, they're not... <laughs> That's a lot of information to read. I know personally, if I were to sit down and read some of these privacy policies, I'm a fairly quick reader, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to have to sit there for like two hours because one, I'm reading it on my phone. It's all going to be small already. You're having to scroll forever. And it's usually not just one page. It's mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, eight pages of information that you have to go through. And every single page is hiding something in it they don't want you to know about yeah oh getting, and they get away with it and it's it's even worse on any game video game that you're trying to download or play that has freaking any online um application <laughs> to it dude like the eulas on those things are fucking insane and nobody reads them because like like you said <laughs> forever to read yeah they take forever to read and then you know a majority of the people reading them isn't isn't going to really understand anything that said in it anyway. So that's, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, no kidding. Justin, I hope you found something special for your lady friend. <laughs> <laughs> what what about just downloading memes from Facebook? I don't think you're going to have two problems with clicking <laughs> and hitting the save button. I don't know how good they've gotten at getting your information yet, but I, I just know that we're not as protected as we think we are. So. Yep, those EULAs don't protect you, they protect the company. Yep. So, but, um, is that kind of all we had on this one? Let's, uh, check uh, it. That's pretty much all I uh, pulled out of it. Okay. Um, right. um, again, we're going to post all the links in, uh, from today's conversation below in the oh. comments. <laughs> so feel free to go and check these out yourself if you find anything. Uh, that you want to touch on again we have the discord you can go into and contact us we have our personal facebook pages that you can actually go into and, and contact us you can add either athena or myself and uh reach out and uh whatever means you find necessary david i appreciate you coming i'm surprised you're actually able to get here because i know you're at work all right and so hopefully we can play some games tonight I'm going to um, toss a, uh, a link to the Discord down here in the...
Yeah, we try and get everything we post out there as quickly and effectively as possible. <laughs> you got to give us some time. I'm still fairly new at this co-hosting thing. Again, this is on my third episode. Uh, if y'all have any ideas for an opening sentence for me, please shoot me the idea. <laughs> because I, I can cover the, the topics just fine. But other than that, I'm a little uh, dense. <laughs> So, um, Joey, so you'll find out about how dense I am later. We've got some very touchy topics to go over today. <laughs> yep. uh, hopefully we don't piss anybody off or get anybody's panties in a bunch. But yeah, I thought about that after You're so I said insensitive. It. Yep, I thought about that after I said it. So That's going to come back and bite me in the butt later. So Julia Little's butt remains said in there. They'll need help if they look in my gallery. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. Now, what are we talking about here, Julia? <laughs> have you seen the ad for the new Ford Bronco? I haven't. Um, I, have. I have, and I absolutely hate how the new Ford Bronco looks. Really? Oh, I hate. They tried to streamline it, make make it real sleek, make it. Cl it it's. I miss the old. I was a fan of the 1980s and earlier Chevys and Ford Dodge bodies, all the square bodies that we <laughs> had back. Then. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of All-American Muscle, my, all the classic cars out there. I would love to get my hands on a 69 Nova, Chevelle, a 67 um, Charger. My favorite um, my favorite cars would be like a 72 to uh, um, like a 82 Camaro. It's a Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> a 72 to like an 80, 82 Camaro. Oh, dungeon stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, 72 to 80, 82 Camaro or uh, 88 to 93 um, K1500 series, you know, the Gen 4 type stuff. Those are kind of like, as far as old cars go, those are my favorites, what I'd want the most. So, Getting us off topic. That's not one of today's conversations. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Right, Maybe no. we can hit that one in a later show, but I'm blaming you for that one right now. Justin there. Snodgrass, he, threw, he sent me a picture. Okay, yeah, I've seen that. Um, they've been talking about that for a while. I can't, yeah, I don't like it. It's too... Aren't they doing the, the Blazer as well? The old Blazer? I haven't heard I anything know, about the Blazer. I know I saw a commercial for one earlier yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it was a red one. I think it was Chevy. I just I did not like it at all. Whatever. All right, we got to get back on topic. Yeah. Also, guys, if you're liking, if you're watching the show and you're liking what you see, please make sure you give it a react. Um, try to stay away from the blue thumbs up. Try to stay away from the blue thumbs up and hit like you know one of the other ones, one of the other colors, yellow or pink or something like that. And um. Uh, also, if you could share, 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 so we could try to get more views and viewers. Thank you very much. Oh, and Gerald Fine is watching with us as well. If I piss you off, don't forget there's the anger button. Yep. I told I told y'all on the first show. If I piss you off, you can go back and look at what I said. So, so just real quick before we move on, um, um, Snodgrass he sent me a picture of the Bronco, so I'll toss that up in the stream real quick so we can, um, so y'all can see it, um. Doot, doot, wrong app or wrong. There we go. I've only been up for a few hours, so my breakfast consisted of caffeine and nicotine. <laughs> breakfast I, of veterans everywhere. Yep. So if you see if you see me blowing smoke, that's me getting my breakfast yep. in. There's the picture of the of the new um, Bronco. What they're planning on for it. So it. Yeah. It's, what is y'all take on that? I would love to see what y'all think about it. I'm not a fan of it. Of course, I'm also not a huge fan of Ford. Nowadays, their 250s look good, but I'm not a fan of the uh, F-150s. So, uh, just... Getting back on topic. Yes, back on topic. <laughs> Justin, you're distracting us. It's good you're interacting, but I'm, I'm pointing fingers now. Yes. Give me the knife hand or chief hand, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so our next topic is, unfortunately, uh, a little depressing. Uh, there was an arson attack in Kyoto. Confront, they've got two numbers posted on their website, so it's a little hard to uh, figure out. The first number they give us is 23. The second number they give us is 33, and then they jump back down to 23. I'm wondering if the 33 so, was a glitch, but there are at least 
23 dead and several, at, the, do, uh, at least a dozen injured from an arson attack. At the top of the article, it says that there's an edit. It has since been confirmed that the attack killed 33 people with many more injured. Kyoto Animation Director Hideaki Hata told local media that the company had recently received threatening emails. So, so I don't know if that was there when you uh, were looking at it, though. I did, but it also looked like later on in the article, I'd have to go back in, but I think they said later on and as well that they posted 23 again. Um, but uh, as it stands, there is a 41-year-old suspect to believe that has sprayed petrol in the building and then ignited it. The threats were stating that they were trying to kill people that they were saying they needed to die. It was... A huge fire. Uh, they don't know the extent of the damage yet, but the people that like the studio themselves, it's an anime community. Um, but this is one of those stories that bring my faith in humanity back a little bit. They started a, the community started a GoFundMe, and they already have over one hundred forty thousand dollars to rebuild the studio itself. So, saying something like that, I don't know about y'all, but seeing that many people come together is a beautiful thing. It's absolutely amazing to see that people can still come together, especially nowadays when there's so much toxicity yep. in today's society. And we go back over toxicity later on in this show. And um, it's, it's good to see that there are still some people out there that believe in the golden rule and random acts of kindness and just being a, a decent human being, to say the least. Yeah. So, um, in the comments, let me hit a couple comments there. So, we got Gerald Fine talking about the Bronco. He said, he said, it looks like they tried to remake the classic Bronco in the same way Volkswagen redid the classic Bug. It looks like a shoddy remake. That's pretty legit right there. And then Justin Snodgrass, regarding the topic we're on right now, he says, disgruntled employee or pissed off gamer? Which is a good question. That is a good question, but as forty-one year old, the forty-one year old suspect, we haven't gotten actually too much information on it. Um, Justin, we appreciate your post. Good, uh, he states, "Good, I am glad people are still good in this world." Um, we are too. Um, I know in the veteran community, you see a lot of the camaraderie, um, trying to see it go out into uh, other aspects of the world is nice to see as well sorry i'm uh, yeah i'm trying to okay he doesn't tell me much <laughs> like i got ready for the show last night and spent three hours getting ready for it i called him out on drinking bro, uh drinking bros page but he's got a call line in is that our call line that is our call line okay so we have a call line again <laughs> so i'm, I'm you see how well we plan this right now. <laughs> well, I, I just, I just want to see if it'll work. So, if Justin wants to call in, you can you can try calling in, and we can see if it'll work. <laughs> oh, good God! <laughs> we're, I promise, we're trying to get more professional at this, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I promise, we're trying to get more viewers and more followers and everything. Uh, David Toom states the article I read. He was not an employee. Uh, it is believed he made claims to the studio, stole some of his material. Okay. What? So, for a game, I'm assuming some material for a game. That's interesting. Uh, I think they were an actually actually an anime studio for uh, the cartoon animation. Oh, okay. Uh, Justin Snodgrass, I fully believe in that. Uh, he states, honestly, in my opinion, we as vets should set the example and get involved. Um I agree, and I was depressed to see a active duty member uh, yesterday was setting a very piss poor example of what it means to be a military member. He was very aggressive in a parking lot. I guess somebody wanted the parking space. Um, oh yeah, I saw. That. I guess he's. Um, he got very aggressive. He ripped off his uh, his cover. We have an he ripped off call. Oh, hey. So it so was let's see if this works. Did this work? How are you now? We are fine. Hey, Can you hear him, Cameron? 
Yeah, I can hear him. All right, cool. So it's this should be working. I can't hear him, uh, but I just commented, you know, uh, one of the things we did on with our show is I think honestly, and with this this article you guys are talking about with the with the arson, um, we as vets should set the example and get involved in our communities. Uh, that's part of the reason why we got behind the whole team Leah thing on on our show uh, is because we wanted to do something that wasn't necessarily vet related, and we want people to see that you know vets care about more than just ourselves. So. You know, I, just my personal opinion, I think that all of us should, should uh, you know, take time to jump into something that not, may not necessarily be better and directly related. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. I can hear, um, I can hear you, Adam. I can hear him. <laughs> okay, I'll have to work on um, getting things set up as far as that goes. I can't, I don't think I'll be able to do anything about it right now because I'll have to shut everything yeah. down. But, um okay. So, but yeah, he said, um, Cameron said he agrees with, with that on that one. So, I might. All right, sounds good. Well, I got to, I think it's, all right, you, you have a good evening, dude. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. So, he is right. We definitely, uh, as vets, do need to set a better example. And reaching out into the community more and more would be a uh, beneficial aspect um, again, going back to the parking lot incident, he did not set a good example. Uh, we will try and find that video and post it, or at least uh, tag people in it below. Um, you know, don't don't be that guy. Yeah, that, and like that dude you were talking about, the um, I guess from what I heard, he's actually been already taken in by his command and being brought up um, on charge and all that stuff for it. Because, I mean, just from the way he was acting, the way he was treating his wife, by her, just yeah. just his wife there in that, that parking lot in that video, it's obvious when they're not in public and they're not at home, she probably gets her ass beat on. And, you know, oh, the, I, the way she... I, hmm? go ahead. I, I, I don't doubt that one bit. Um, it's he, he aggressively grabbed his wife to move her out of the way. And the child was already in the car. You can hear the child talking. Mm -hmm. uh, there were several people videoing this. And it def the two people that were, I guess, getting involved with this conversation were female. I mean, one, I don't think you should start a fight with a woman. I don't think you should hit a woman. There are other means to handle it. But we're going to go into that in more detail later on. Uh, so yep. we, so. Will, uh, we will touch back on that in a little bit. But and then, uh, for now, I think we should uh, move on from that topic. Wanted to throw it out there. We got Ginny Langshaw checking in. Thank you for watching. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we have a couple really deep stories that we're going to be getting into later, as we mentioned earlier. So we'll we'll get there eventually. I, yeah, and I linked that Sweet. one. So, so now let's move on. We're getting into this time. It's going to be a little bit more interesting of a topic, kind of going more into science on that one. So we're talking about... Uh, Apollo, how they took us to the moon in 1969, and why we haven't gone back yet. Um, so, Cameron, what do we have on this one, dude? Well, for starters, since 1969, or in 1966, NASA was re receiving 4.4% of the federal budget. As soon as we got a man on the moon, the focus changed to more national security, more uh, pertinent areas of America. So their budget went from 4.4 percent to under one percent in 1975 and only got over one percent a little bit in 1991 and 1992 they do plan on putting a man back on the moon by 2024 I, but with that uh one of the people was quoted in saying the risk of uh launch, just launching somebody is one in 38 uh, people will die from being launched into space and we go into an explosion. Thankfully, nobody was hurt in our next story. Mm -hmm. But uh, the NASA hasn't been as active. I mean, the president back then uh, was pushing, pushing to get on the moon. It was a space race. They know it was a space race. They, was, they were trying to get to the moon first. 
We got beat getting into outer space, but we were the ones that put the flag on the moon. And my favorite joke about this is, well, what if somebody goes up there, kicks down the American flag and puts up like a Chinese or a Russian flag? Would America go up and uh, remove their flag and put another one up? 100% yes, we would. <laughs> so in 100%. Going back a little bit further, um, when you were saying they, they plan on putting uh, a man on the moon again by 2024 or whatever it was, um, what I've heard regarding that is actually by around that point in time, they actually want to be building a base on the moon and having someone permanently stationed there um, or having people permanently stationed there. And then there's also something I'd heard is they want to build another space station that's in a, um, uh, I want to say it's a synchronous orbit. So it orbits the moon, it comes back around and orbits the earth and orbits the moon. So it's kind of like doing that kind of figure eight thing. Figure eight. So what I got out of the article is that uh, by 2024, we'll put a man on the moon. By 2030, China wants to put a man on the moon. And by 2040, Russia wants to start a space colony. Those mm -hmm. were the dates I got. Yep. Well, see, what the reason I'm <laughs> the, this is <laughs> this is Jenny, a, what's Jenny posted pretty extensive training has to happen. <laughs> yep. Exactly, but it's like, um, what I was hearing as far as the um that stuff goes. This is a story that we'd covered on the show a couple months ago, probably on it. But um, what it was is basically they want to be able to do the the space station and then a base on the moon to be able to enable the ability to travel deeper into the solar system with with easier. Um, because you know taking off from a space station that's between the moon and the earth or off of the moon, um, they have less gravity, less, less restricted. Yep. It's going to take less fuel, less energy, you know, all that stuff to be able to get off. And then notably also with that less time, because they'll be able to have more fuel for more propulsion to be able to travel faster and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, one of the things is they want to get to Mars and they also, they want to have mint a man on Mars, by I think it was somewhere around 2030? Uh, something like that. The original plan was, uh, it was proposed we would see a Mars landing in 1981. Uh, in 1975, they had a plan to have between 10 and 140,000 people living on Mars. But in 2005, uh, the plan was, uh, a plan was put in place. Unfortunately, it was canceled four years later. So they have had discussions about putting somebody on mars but focuses have kind of shifted and we go into that on the uh the spacex explosion which is actually our next topic how um we can't keep ahead of the chinese for deep space exploration uh for the fact that they have they're pushing technology to uh basically null and void our technology they're staying at a step ahead of us on every single little thing. And unfortunately, uh, they're not pushing with how they're able to stay ahead. They're not pushing as hard to get the technology for us to actually do that space explore exploration. Yeah, sorry, I got a text message real quick. But um, but I was going to say, I was go oh. hit some of... Huh? So focused. <laughs> well, I was gonna say as I was going to hit some of the comments. So, um, Michael Kias Kiaskis um, was saying by 2040 we should have a base on Mars. Um, Mickey Severson says basically it's looking like a big ass space race slash collaboration. Um, and Justin Snodgrass said, "So if sex on a jet is the Mile High Club, what would sex on the moon be? Out of this world, <laughs> most likely." <laughs> uh, that's great. Jeez. Uh, unfortunately, they said it. Uh, they were talking about it in the um, article about what would happen if things were to go south. It would basically be, basically be a one day event if uh, if we tried to do this because we folk we rely on satellites so much, and uh, if we were to lose those, you know, we don't have GPS anymore. We don't have uh, any kind of directional. Uh, ability so it would I mean basically in one day everything would go south yeah so um let's see all right um I guess it's time to jump on to the SpaceX one yeah all right so let's go I'll ahead. let you start this one I'll start the next few 
All right, sounds good. Um, so let's see, this one right here, I haven't actually fully read the story, so I'm just going to kind of hit some topics on it. Um, I don't have much time lately anymore because working and stuff. So let's see. SpaceX now knows why its astronaut capsule exploded and more delays are likely. So um, recently, SpaceX, they launched a rocket with um, a capsule on it for, you know, a, it's supposed to be a manned capsule, um, and it blew up. It exploded, and they found out why that happened. Um, you know, uh, yeah, they uh, they had a titanium valve that the uh, oxidizing, oh, what was it called? The oxidizing fuel was passing over it and it they had been using the fuel for so long and they'd been using titanium for so long that they didn't expect that to be able to happen unfortunately there was a leak and the uh oxidizing agent actually did react with the valve um they are trying to investigate it more they're claiming the investigation is about 80 percent complete uh they were doing a uh auto abort test and they've been doing the testing for a while, no fails. And unfortunately, this one did just uh, 100 milliseconds before the abort. Um, a video actually went around online 12 days before the accident, uh, only to be confirmed after those 12 days. So it sounds like, again, we talked about uh, people hiding stuff in uh, our last show, Russia hiding information from the, the people. But now we've got... Uh, the SpaceX being hidden for a little bit, but they finally did come forward hmm. and they talked about it. Um, nobody was hurt, but there was a lot of smoke that went over Co uh, Coca Beach. And uh, they had, again, they had the multiple tests. Uh, they've done static tests, static fire tests for the vehicle's engines. Uh, the capsule had actually successfully flown a month before. Uh, until this actually went through. They're still planning on having somebody in space by 2019, or by the end of 2019, excuse me. Okay. Uh, so but they're, they're trying to, uh, it looks like they're trying to wrap up the investigation. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't really sound like they lied. Mostly it just kind of sounds like um, they're, they, they don't want to get you know, they don't want to worry anyone or anything like that because, you know, if they're having capsules explode, that means, okay, when they finally put, what are they going to call their, are they going to be astronauts or are they going to have some some other term for them? But either way, um, the people who are going up into space in, the, in their capsules, um, you know, because like you just said, they want to be able to send some actually up into space by the end of 2019. That, that deadline's coming up pretty quick. So, you know, if... Um, <laughs> Uh, they're still having. Well, this is the first time they'd actually test tested a manned capsule, right? No, this one wasn't manned. They'd actually had several well, tests beforehand. Yeah. I've, okay. Several tests on what would be a manned capsule at some point. They've had several tests already on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but but the problem they what they've actually found out is that a valve was leaking by the valve is a was supposed to be a high pressure valve. It only released after the pressure was substantial enough. And then uh, I, there was some form of a leak in it, and the uh, liquid oxidizer actually uh, reacted with the tit uh, the titanium valve. So okay, so, so yeah. they crossed they crossed the they what they what had actually happened is they had the valve passing over the uh, uh, pressurized lines. So it sounds like they crossed the lines wrong. They didn't install them correctly, from what the article what I pulled out of the article. So they they whiffed on their alignment a little bit. Okay. So it, it's still with the leak happening. It did cause the problem. So basically, I mean, just someone didn't check and double check and re double check their work enough, like you're supposed to do in the aviation community. Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, that, and that's why that they they're so strict in the aviation community because one little fuck up can kill a lot of people. Um, oh, so yeah. while we're, while we're on the topic of the moon and all that stuff right now, I just had a pop-up for a story. Apparently Buzz Aldrin today <laughs> punched a moon, a moon landing denier in the face. Is this, isn't, this isn't the first time he's done this either. You've no, done it before. 
So and he's getting old, man. <laughs> right? He's so getting, he's getting up there in age, and he still has some fight left in him. Yep. So former U.S. Air Force fighter pilot Buzz Aldrin was the second man to step on the moon 50 years ago, and he nearly faced a battery charge 17 years ago when he punched conspiracy theorists in the face. Aldrin was approached by filmmaker and moon landings deni- denier Bart S- Sebrill in 2002, a confrontation that resulted in Aldrin punching Sebrill in the face after repeated harassment over the moon landing. Um, there's a video of that. The video shows Aldrin attempting to cross the street with a film crew and his colleague when he is approached by Sebrill, who's carrying a Bible. All right, so let's see. Is this about that? Because, the, um, coward, a liar, and a thief. Okay, so this story... Okay, I so only saw the 2002. I thought this was I thought this was something that happened just recently, but nope. Apparently, oh, it's just his crap. <laughs> What's that? Read Gerald's comment. Um, quality insurance craftsman 100. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I officially have a man crush on Buzz Aldrin. All right. So, um, but yeah. Uh, there's that. Now let's go ahead and move forward on to the neural link. So this is more stuff. Uh, actually, the next one is the teleportation. Oh yes, teleportation. I didn't get that one pulled up. Doop, doop. All right, let me grab that. Yeah, article. <laughs> right. So we're going to continue on with space right now. Um, actually, a group of researchers in China sent a photon in to a orbiting satellite 300 mi- uh, miles away. The process is called quantum ta- uh, entanglement, and MIT State says the furthest distance tested. Uh, the group of researchers actually had been doing this for about a month, and over the month, they had sent millions of these photons and successfully uh, launched and received over 900. According to the MIT Technology Review, this is an essential step towards global scale quantum internet. Yep. So, and this what that means, I don't know, free free Wi Fi for everybody. Okay. So, Vet Radio Syndicate um, posts something about quantum entanglement. Yeah, that would have to be um, something about. Oh no, that's me posting as Vet Radio Syndicate. Let me change that. <laughs> so, um, I swear, people. I promise, we're gonna get better. We're <laughs> going to get better. I promise on that one. All right. So, um, by the time we have twenty people constantly watching, we will have. <laughs> This all planned and prepped and <laughs> figured out. Good to go every time. So, but um, yeah. So the quantum entanglement thing. This is actually legitimately teleporting stuff into into space. Like there, it's not you know, they're launching something at high speed. It's le- legitimately there's an item here and then now it's here, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Jenny, you are correct. <laughs> so, um. But I yeah. hang out with this guy too much. <laughs> Not lately. I've been working my I ass off. But, <laughs> but, um, Hopefully today you've got some time. So, but, um, yeah, so the quantum entanglement. So and what this will, will do, what this will help with, is um, high-speed internet, for one thing. If you don't have the, you know, have to worry about the bandwidth running through lines or even just lines because you're going to have typical, re- you know, standard resistance in a line. Any type of line, you know, whether it's fiber optic or it's, you know, cable lines, gold lines, copper lines, you know, cable lines. What the fuck? All right. But, you know, any kind of line, you're going to have a natural resistance contained within that, that um, transfer media uh, with the ability to teleport these. Um, uh, um, Tacos um, and margaritas. No yeah. tequila for me. It makes me strip. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so being able to transport these tacos and, and margaritas without actually having to move something, it, you know, for Internet will be actually key to really, really high speed Internet. So we're going to see some awesome um, high speed Internet coming out with us. And I'm sure getting to that point, we're still probably 10 to 15 years away from any of that actually being a thing. You know, you know. Uh, although Jenny, again, we always have our Discord. You can always come and join us in there after the show and uh, interact with either myself, Athen, both of us. Uh, post whatever you want. So feel free to join us after afterwards. I'll, I'll go ahead and toss another link in there for the Discord. Um, so is that all we've got on this story? Are we? Are we? Going- a very quick cut, precise story. They got to the point very effectively on that one. So I was happy last night getting through that through that one again for those of you joining us now 
Athen made me stay up a little too late for that one. I, I gave them to you the night before last. <laughs> no, you didn't. When I got a hold of everything, it was last night. Although I did, I did kind of screw myself on that one. I wound up playing some video games with two buddies beforehand, and then I got dragged into another group of two buddies, and then another group of two buddies. So instead of uh, joining or getting prepped at like 5 o'clock, I was getting ready at 10 o'clock. And Amanda's watching. Thank you for watching, Amanda. Welcome. So, um, yeah. All right. Now, I've seen the next topic. I've seen t way too many horror movies about stuff like this. I've seen way too many things going wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, too busy doing shot things. Um, but our next topic comes from another story about Elon Musk. Elon Musk. So, and um, he is very tech happy nowadays, and he is doing a lot of. Uh, new things um i don't know how i fully feel about this one yet i think this is going a little too far uh i can see it being beneficial in the early stages by being offline and not actually being able to go and connect to like your phone and stuff like that but it's ha it's handy for those who are paralyzed and what i'm talking about is hooking up your brain to a computer hooking up your you brain Oh, sorry. I'm... Elon Musk is at it again he want, uh, with something new. He wants to hook up the human brain. They've already been doing animal testing, and I know how some people feel about animal testing. They are regretful. They have stated they are regretful that they had to do it, but they had to test it one way, shape, or another. But they're trying to create a symbi symbiotic relationship with uh, artificial intelligence, and testing could be started next year. The company, currently called Neuralink, is hiring right now, but little is still known. But apparently they have means to hook up your brain to technology. The only We've only picked up six things so far. One, they already have a product in place. Two, it could be available within eight to ten years for people without disabilities. As I said, they've already had it out. Uh, they've been able to move a mouse and control a keyboard with a disabled person's brain. So that is uh, good. It gives people a means to, uh, <laughs> Jenny, I'm with you on that one. But it gives people a means to communicate uh, right now. Uh, three, the surgery is predicted to be very similar to LASIK, very, uh, not very invasive. It's um, all controlled by robots. It's small, I mean, the, the fibers they're using are microscopic. Uh, the next thing we picked up, it's operated by an iPhone app. It's operated by an iPhone app? It's operated by an iPhone app. <laughs> not kidding. Read the article. It's like number five or six on the article, but it talks about it being all controlled by an app, uh, which brings me to the next thing. They were talking, one of the members was asking, would, um, a third, would a third-party software Running on the pod, be able to re, uh, have read and write abilities. Uh, Elon actually states that it could be something in the future. We're still not certain. But the last thing they talk about, again, is what I said in the beginning. They're looking for that symbiotic relationship. Okay. Too many horror movies. See, no. <laughs> see, what? see, this I is... Mean, what, what's that robot they got out right now that's starting to look like... A, 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 it's starting to pass the Turing test and become more and more AI. It's a female robot she was talking about in one of her last interviews. I wish I could remember her name, but she wants respect for all robots, <laughs> even though they're robots. Pull and the I'm already plug, dude. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> pull, no, shut it down. You are... All right, we're done. Let's okay. go into some... Do, let's go into more medical you... things. Let's go into some other research, but this is... We... Do you want Terminator? Because oh. this is oh. how you get Terminator. God, I might lose power here in a little bit, ladies and so, gentlemen. That one was... A, I did not think it was going to storm today, but I just heard something that sounded like God was coming after me. Oh, damn. So we got yeah. we got Terrell Gill. Um, he's watching hey, with us. Hey, back. What's up, Terrell? He said uh, he was... Uh, he says, what's up? People just got back from t taking kids to... Lion oh, went to watch Lion King. That's awesome. So... So you got to cry for a second time. How'd that feel? <laughs> Was it, was the... I know everybody here when they watched The Lion King the first time, they were crying. You can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> um, I didn't. You can get the hell out of the show. All right, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, I'm Cameron Bates, and welcome back to 1700 Somewhere. Right? <laughs> I, uh, watch. No, I'm not going to do that. 
it takes too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I could turn off my camera real quick, but no. Um, but yeah, so um, let's see. Michael Klaskis is is this done by the VA <laughs> on a special floor in between real floors? Maybe. Oh, some super soldiers could come out of that. Oh God. <laughs> so pass. Pass. Yeah. Right. Um, the Bionic Man. All right. Let's. Uh. So we're we're done I mean, with Neuralink, yeah, right? Yeah, we're done with the Neuralink. All right, so hopefully, hopefully for a while as well. All right, yeah, right. <laughs> no more, no Terminator. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to Florida's one of twenty-seven states um, to have a salmonella outbreak currently. Yeah. So ninety-three, including ninety-three people. Yep, with so. ninety-three people. So um, I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase this article. So in Sarasota, Florida, the CDC, CDC and FDA are investigating what is now twenty-seven states. And 93 people were infected by salmonella that is linked to pig or dog treats. Um, Florida's they one were of the states. The bulk, uh, bulk open bins. Bulk open bins. So, like, bulk when you. Bins. So, the, the sealed ones that you can get in the little baggies and stuff like that haven't proved anything yet. Uh, however, the pet stores that have the big bulk mm -hmm. amount of pig ears that have come in have had uh, salmonella uh, caused. An infection to salmonella in dogs as well as humans. Uh, all it takes is for a human to touch it, and you can be infected. And for a dog, once it starts chewing on it, it's uh, it's over. And Jenny, I know we have a lot of problems with Florida. Florida man, we hear stories all the time. But this isn't just a Florida story. It was posted in Florida. See, but this is this is a USA wide problem right now. So. When, and when it's coming, when it goes to like, you know, especially in the bulk type thing, when you just have it sitting out like that, it leaves it very susceptible to salmonella in general. And then another thing, salmonella, the they don't, they don't have to, people don't have to actually consume the treats. Just literally touching it is enough to, you know, be able to get you salmonella. And typically the way that you're, that you want to um, go about that and kind of consider it is, is because it's the same thing with like, you know, birds and lizards and stuff like that snakes you know reptiles um effectively any type of egg laying animal and then you know with you know that has their poop laying around and all that stuff you know such as lizards and birds and all that stuff they're you're susceptible to be able to get salmonella from them just by handling them so i used to have lots of different reptiles i used to have you know i used to own i had two red tail boas one nicaraguan red tail boa three ball pythons i had a bearded dragon i had a water dragon um and I had all of these animals at the same time. I also had a um, speckled Cali California, a speckled California king snake, which was a badass snake, but it always got away, <laughs> got out. But so, Jenny, uh, going to your comment real quick. Sorry, Athen. Uh, yeah, all you have to do is touch it, especially when you handle any kind of raw uh, poultry as well. Make sure you wash your hands constantly. I was have some. I was into that. <laughs> well, I jumped on it first. <laughs> but it's like when you have when you have reptiles and you know even often birds. Um, you want to keep hand sanitizer at a minimum near their enclosure. Whenever you handle them, you want to, you know, wash your hands with the hand sanitizer so you can get rid of the salmonella. After handling, never touch your face, never touch any yep. orifice. Uh, wash your hands as soon as possible. Yes, we love them as pets. Yes, they're fun to have. Mm -hmm. Make sure you handle them safely. Yep. So... And yeah, like he was saying, just touching your face or doing anything afterwards can in fact infect you with salmonella, which... I mean, salmonella. Uh, no crying. It's Terrell. Uh, you have some very unemotional children. <laughs> so, but salmonella. I mean, it, for the most case, uh, salmonella is effectively food poisoning. So it's like it's not horrible, and you know, you're not typically going to have to not worry about. Hold on, hold on. Not horrible. I, if you get salmonella, is basically food poisoning. You're firing out both ends. Yeah. So unless you're like me and have a bathtub right next to your toilet, <laughs> you're going to have to do the switcheroo real quick. The, the, but the thing is, with salmonella or food poisoning and all that stuff, it's like, you know, it's only going to last like maybe a day or two. You're going to feel like crap, but if for the most part, in most cases, unless you get a really, really bad case of it, you're you're not going to be having to worry about anything more extreme than, you know, effectively shitting yourself and puking yourself, which, you know, due to old age and all that stuff for myself, anytime I'm puking, I have to worry about shitting myself. So, <laughs> so I don't know. And once you run out of bodily 
any stuff to process, you're going to hate life. The worst is not when you're firing out both ends. It's when you stop because now you're just achy, miserable, tired. But you can't stay in bed because you got to worry about something else. Never trust a fart, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yep, never trust a fart. So Jenny in there, she says, I had a red-eared slider, an illegal animal to own in Oregon. But yeah, I was always washing my hands. So yeah, exactly. With And turtles especially, they're one of the ones that you really want to make sure you wash your hands. Because, in fact, that's the reason why... There's a lot of restrictions on owning turtles. I didn't know red ear sliders were illegal to own in Oregon either, by the way. But, um, uh, re you know, turtles with them, um, that's why there's a lot of restrictions on them. Like, you can't, there, it's technically illegal to sell turtles that are under a certain size. So, because, you know, turtles grow slowly and they, when they're born, they're, they're really small. Like, you know, I had a stink pot um, musk turtle. And it was like that big, you know, it was like only an inch long. And, you know, that turtle is going to be that small for five to 10 years. Right. Um, and technically it's illegal for pet shops to sell those unless they're for educational, um, basically educational purposes. Right. Um, because a lot of parents will go get their kids, this little teeny tiny, um, uh, turtle, um, in California, it was, it was two inches. The carpus couldn't be any smaller than two inches, but parents would go buy their children these little turtles because you know it's cute to get your kid a turtle but then the kid's going to be handling it and kids will get salmonella and when you have a young child like you know five or six year old they child, like what I've this, got, and this and this and this and this <laughs> and this and this and when stick you stick a finger up their nose you know yeah and when you have a young child like that salmonella is going to affect them worse than it would us as an adult so they're at more risk of it actually being um something critical for that, you know, for that fact, as far as getting salmonella on that. But, yeah, so moving right along. <laughs> so the next two stories, as we said, start to get a little more real. This next one's a little short. Uh, it is very depressing. Um, there's a sailor missing in the Arabian Sea. The sailor was aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln, the aircraft carrier. Uh, when he was reported missing, they ran a uh, man overboard drill to get the man count and get everybody account, uh, accounted for. Uh, and then he was indeed reported missing. They did a full crew, uh, full ship sweep to try and find him anywhere, could not so. locate him. And unfortunately, at that point in time, uh, they had reported his stat duty status, whereabouts unknown. Unfortunately, today, Athen had updated me that he is officially listed as lost, lost at sea. sea. So yep. if we could so, take a moment of silence real quick for our missing brother. All right. Rest easy, shipmate. Um, so. Fair winds and following seas. Yep. So uh, with this, um, I, I'm going to go and explain a little bit more into the whole man overboard type thing because um, uh, uh, Cameron, he's a bubblehead, so he doesn't have as much experience with man overboard. Squid. Actually, we had one man overboard. This will pick the mood up a little bit. You did. Uh, we, oh, dude, you're going to laugh. <laughs> right. uh, we, had, we actually were in port, so it's one of the few times you can actually have a man overboard. And you get that green moss, mildew, algae buildup on certain areas of the boat. Mm -hmm. And he had, to, he had to do maintenance on the bow. And stepped off the non-skid for like a <laughs> second and everybody should know what i'm talking about with the snowman shuffle you start your legs start kicking a lot like this and your your arms are flailing like you're trying to get your balance you're not getting your balance on this stuff especially when it's curved yep he went right in you could see the skid mark he left where his butt hit and he slid in Thankfully, we found out that our, you know, the, the water-actuated vet, uh, vests, mm -hmm. life preservers, yeah, we found out those actually do work. <laughs> yeah. Freaking... Main attack and tested. It was tested. <laughs> the fucking... uh, he had to go to the, the area of uh, Kings Bay, Georgia is very water-polluted. Yeah. He wound up having to go in and get some shots. He had to get some, uh, he, he went to the hospital and got his... Uh, Vitals taken. He was looked after. He was fine. Nothing came of it. He didn't ingest any of the water. Nothing got into his eyes or anything. So he was fine. But I was pure side. I got to watch everything. We called man overboard <laughs> and then turned around like two minutes later and canceled it because he was already swimming towards. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, and the, the decks on the subs, those drop off quick. 
Like, yes, they do. It's like, I've, uh, because... On a Boomer class and a GN class, it's not as bad as the Fast Attacks. They're mm. a little more fat. They're the big girls of the family. But <laughs> Jenny, when I was stationed up north, I did too. Um, <laughs> but it, it does still have a very extreme curve to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we non-skid as much as we can. Uh, we actually, after his incident, because of the maintenance uh, my division had to do, we expanded the non-skid out a little bit more to try <laughs> and prevent that from happening again. Thankfully, the rest of my time in the military, we never had another incident like that. Uh, thank God. And yeah, um, it's it's difficult for you guys on the uh, um, on subs to be able to get man over, man overboards. And thankfully, really the only opportunities you have are in port, so it's not going to be as bad. Uh, in port o uh, and OSVs uh, mm -hmm. when we have uh, deliveries out at sea. But other than that, I mean, we're underwater in a basically a giant dildo. <laughs> yeah. So so for for us surface sailors, it's it's much more of a thing. And honestly. When, when you're looking at it, you're going to hear more about uh, man overboards on surface ships uh, when they're an aircraft carrier than any other any other ship. Because typically on most of your surface ships, you know, lifelines and everything, it's fairly hard to fall overboard. On an aircraft carrier, uh, when you're on the flight deck, you um, don't have lifelines around the flight deck. I mean, for good reasons. They do have nets, but at some points, you know, the nets are, you know there's gaps between the nets and stuff like that for, you know, certain reasons. And oftentimes what will happen is you'll have a sailor walking across the flight deck and, um, you know, on the flight deck, you always have to have hearing protection on double hearing protection. So, you know, you don't hear a lot and you're not paying attention to things. Sometimes, you know, people will get, will get zoned out. And what will happen oftentimes is you have a sailor walking across the flight deck and there's a jet on board on deck that has their engines thrusting, right? <laughs> and, you know, dude will go walk in and walk right behind this jet with the engine thrusting and then go, boop, <laughs> off the Bye, deck. Felicia. <laughs> yep. And, you know, we had that happen a couple times on um, the Constellation when we were in the Gulf. Um, thankfully, we found, I think that happened twice on the Constellation. And um, thankfully, we found them both. And then we had uh, one of them, he ended up spending eight hours in the water, though. Oh, um, wow. But... Uh, we ended up finding them. We didn't find them. We searched for them for a little bit, and then we, you know, said, hey, we got to go back on our mission. Because when I was in the Gulf on the Constellation, we were there in support of operations for the Shock and Awe campaign. So, you know, we had business to take care of. So we're like, nope, we got to go do our shit. And we sent our small boys to look for them, and they found them. Um, but we had another man overboard, which is actually kind of a funny story. Um, on aircraft carriers, they do often what's called a FOD walkdown, which, you know, Anyone who's outside the, the skin of the ship on the flight deck, when they call FOD walk down, you're expected to go to the bow of the ship and line up in a line. And then everyone slowly walks the length of the, of the craft, the ship, um, the deck, and picks up any little teeny item that there possibly is on the ground. Anything, a little rock, a little pebble, a twig, you know, anything. If it's on the ground, it needs to be picked up, right? You pick it up, put it in your bag, in your bag or in your pocket. Um, and then, so basically what happened one day is there was this dude, he was, he was on the flight deck and they called FOD walk down. What happened is, so you have the nets and then oftentimes underneath the nets or somewhere around there, it's about five, six feet down. There's usually a catwalk that you can use to get inside the skin of the ship. That's a deck down below, um, the, the, the flight deck. What this day, dude did was he was trying to get out of FOD walkdown because he heard FOD walkdown start getting called. So he went to jump off the deck down onto the catwalk. And the spot he chose to jump was a spot where there was no safety net and the catwalk wasn't there. So dude literally just jumped off the deck of the ship, <laughs> landed in the water. <laughs> That's was... like watching a video game glitch. Yep. Like, you're in, I'm going to jump off this area. I know there's something below me. <laughs> Oops. Uh, where is it? Oh. <laughs> and then in I, I believe the deck of a aircraft carrier is something like 90 feet off the water so <laughs> oh that had to hurt <laughs> yep so yeah um but in, in you know whenever there's a man overboard you get the man overboard man overboard you know and the notification of what side of the ship it is you have to report to your muster station you go to your muster station and everyone just sits there while and you take everyone gets counted for if someone is not found then they go do a quick search of anywhere they think they might be and 
you know, the ship automatically always does a hard turn, you know, a hard turn, U-turn type thing. And then you just kind of start t going around in circles around wherever it was where the sailor went overboard. And you look for them. You have people out there with the big eyes. Um, oftentimes they'll launch a helicopter and all that stuff, you know, and they'll put um, small craft out just to try to look for them. And in most, time, most cases, they'll get found because anytime you're on the flight deck when um, you're at sea, you have to have a float coat on. Um, those float coats, as Cameron said, as soon as you hit the water, they're salt water activated. So as soon as you hit the water, they poof, they, they, um, inflate, keep you afloat. Um, and then moving on from there, it's like, uh, so they inflate, they, you know, all that stuff. And then you have shark repellent in them. Well, it's a combination shark repellent and, um, I can't remember what they call it, but it's a dye that, uh, dyes the water around you bright green. So hey, y'all got fancy stuff. Yep. So it's like you can you you pop that out and that goes into the water around you. So it helps find you. Then you have whistles and you have a beacon, a flashing beacon light, and all that stuff that's on your float coat. Um, and then also, well, when we go to boot camp, we get trained in ways. I mean, in most cases, whenever I was on board ship, I was wearing coveralls, so this wouldn't have worked for me. But the people on the flight deck are usually wearing um, camouflage pants, so they can do it. But we're trained on how to, you know, you tie your, the the cuffs of your pants in a knot. And then you fill your pants up with, with air, tie them up, and then tie it around your neck. So that acts as a, an additional life vest, all that stuff. So we have we have tools and training and all that stuff. But, I mean, you know, an aircraft carrier, like I said, it's like 90 feet off the, the deck's 90 feet off the water. If you land wrong, you know, things might not work out too well for you. So, and that float coat could easily fall off, too. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't very secure. Mm hmm So, but... I mean, yeah, so we can move on from that one. We can stop. Well, what do we got going now? Um, I need Bianca to... Evans. All right. Let me. Okay, Bianca Evans. All right. So we're going deeper into the sadness dive. All right. Let's see. We got um, Michael Klaskis says, I'm a Marine. I was on a LST and I had a blast. Even through a typhoon, I didn't get, I don't get sick. Good times. Thanks. Oh, yeah. They'll rock you to sleep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Freaking. The bigger the boat, the the nicer it is when you have rough seas. Um, I remember times going. It really sucked when we were taking. Uh, when I got moved into the actual berthing, I used to uh, for a while I was living on the second level, and uh, the racks were facing from inboard to outboard instead of from uh, about a stern mm -hmm. for most of them. And uh, when we started taking rolls, it just rolled me from foot to uh, from heel to head, and it was nice. It put me to sleep. I when they moved me to birthing, I was on a aft bunk, uh, aft bunk, yeah, and we started taking angles and dangles one day, and I was deep asleep, and that <laughs> bunk comes up to about my chin, so like five foot nine ish, mm -hmm. and I rolled right the <laughs> hell out of my rack. Oh, That's... it hurt, dude. the The wake up um, rover came around started tapping on my curtain to wake me up and I grabbed his ankle and he jumped and screamed I was like I'm up what happened to you what do you think <laughs> Don Don Baruby said for for a second there I thought you guys were wearing matching shirts <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah it, it's the same only thing we had going for us for today's show so <laughs> yeah right so uh, it's, uh, it's like um I, I always preferred the rocking in the when we were it was rocking you side to side in the rack. That was always nice. That would help you get to sleep. But the bigger your boat, the more gentle the rock is and all that stuff. And then also um, another crazy thing about you know your list and um, all that stuff that you get when you're at sea. The list and yaw and all that. Senior chief fine would probably know a little bit better than I do what those are called. I've been out for ten years, but um, it's like when you're going up and down up and down ladders or stairs as it were like it is the craziest thing in the world to like when you're trying to go up a ladder and your sh your boat you know comes up and starts uh cresting a wave and as you're walking up you just kind of get glued to the stairs and you're like oh my god and then it starts to come back down over the wave and then you just float up the stairs <laughs> that's that shit's awesome so falling upstairs freaking getting thrown downstairs it's... yes people you can fall upstairs it is mm -hmm. possible Yes, <laughs> I've done it before. So but, um, you don't have to be talented in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So um, let me get that other story pulled up. Um, I didn't. I, that's where I 
stop. Right. Oh, sweet. So uh, that's the next story. That's the uh, uh, story after the Bianca Devins one. Okay, Bianca. Oh, Bianca Devins. Okay, yeah. Um, let me find that one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this goes back to social media. This also gets into a very controversial topic right now. So um, it is a little bit about sexism and feminism, and it goes into. We're going to go into some of the beliefs I have. You may not agree with them. Again, this is probably not the platform to actually get into the arguments on it. So please, please, please try and avoid any. Uh, aggression in our comments P uh, feel free once again to join us in discord we can always go into more depth later on after the show and then we can voice your opinions afterwards if they're not too controversial or you don't think they're going to cause a lot of uh, aggression in the comments feel free to post them we'll, we'll hit, touch on yours as well so real quick before we get into this Don Baruby, um he's uh, he's another one of buddies he was in the Navy as well um, he he said, try working out in rough seas, doing reps. Oh. You better time that shit. I once saw a guy wreck himself on elliptical. <laughs> I, my, I, my favorite thing was when we knew our chief of the boat was doing his running. He always ran. Dude was, dude was a cardio enthusiast, uh, enthusiast. And the treadmills were phased from bow to stern. So you're, you're running. Try and run on a level platform. And anytime you take a turn, you try and minimize the, the bubble, the up or down angle on the ship. But my chief... Well, he he was an old ang a ganger himself, and my chief loved to screw with him. Anytime we we would send the roving watch down below and just take a peek, find out if he's running right now, and he would come back up, find out, or come back up, report to the uh, the chief of the watch or the dive, whatever my chief was standing, say yes or no, he's running right now, and then my chief would request a turn. Let's make a left, right, whatever. You there? Sounds like he might have lost uh, internet. Hold on. Yep, looks like he lost the internet. All right, so I'm doing this by myself right now. Um, he crashed, it seems. Um, whoa, where am I at? All right. Let me send him a message real quick. Sorry about this. I'm going to try to get him back in. Technical difficulties. We're always plagued by him. All right. Um, he is not there. All right. Yep. It looks like he lost power. Let's find out. He's not even answering. All right, so I'm just going to carry on with this. Hopefully, he gets back in. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it looks like Skype took a turn. Yeah, it, it did, but he's not answering on um, Discord either. So, so um, yeah, I'm on my own for this one today, or for now, anyway. Cameron is unavailable. So, we'll see what goes on with that. All right, moving forward. So, I'm going to get into that story that we were talking about a second ago. I would have really liked for him to be here for it, but... That's going to be problematic. All right. So, um, Bianca Devins. Um, so, Bianca Devins. So, th this is a story. Bianca Devins' murder is not an Instagram story, domestic violence expert says. So, effectively, what's happening with this is here recently, it was, um, it was on July 14th, 2019. So, July 14th of this year. Um, she was murdered by her boyfriend. Um, Yep, by her boyfriend on July 14th, um, 2019. Good Lord, I'm not good at this. Okay, he's coming back. So I'll just, I'll wing it while. I'll wing it while he's get, he's coming back. All right. So I'm just going to kind of read the story and then we'll go from there. Hopefully he gets back and we can actually do this. So um, and the analysis, most multiple experts see it as a disturbing example of violence being about power and control. So the week a murder, the week of murder went viral. This is the story. So Brandon Clark, he was 21 years old, allegedly killed his 17 year old girlfriend, Bianca Devins. 
then posted photo photos of her body and the game on the gaming site Discord, which is what we keep talking about that we have that we want to venture to. But don't worry, we're not going to post any pictures of dead bodies there. Well, okay, there's Cameron. Swing. All right. <laughs> Thank God you're back. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm on my phone right now, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to try and it's... Oh, I might have Wi-Fi. Okay. Okay, it's back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get everything up and running. I'm going to continue on with my story right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, our, uh, our chief would request a turn and then uh, would actually request an angle... And we would do like a two degree up or down to give our chief of the boat a little more rough workout. So that was quite entertaining. I am very sorry about that, people. I do apologize. As I said earlier, it's been pretty bad. I hope I don't lose uh, internet again. I'm, I'm, I promise you I am trying to get back in. I'm trying to get all my stories back up right now. Um, I did. I did. To be fair, I did warn you. I was not expecting rain today, and I didn't get any kind of a notification on any of my weather apps, so it, it sucks. I I do apologize. I'm going to jump out of my Facebook or off of my phone. It looks like I have Wi-Fi again, so I'm going to get back into the call with Athen real quick. So give us just about a minute, and hopefully I'll be back up and running. Awesome. So how's everyone's day going? <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, there he is. All right. So, yeah, here we are, and there's Cameron again. All right, your little, little... It's uh, going gonna, it, gonna to suck, people. I'm sorry you have to deal with it. Um, the apartment we stay at typically you loses the um, power rather quickly. Uh, thankfully, I got lucky. It was just quick power surge. Um, I, I, I do apologize. Hopefully <laughs> this will not happen again. Um, but so. just bear, bear with me. We're going to try and get through the rest of the show as smoothly as possible. Uh, All right. So I'd already kind of started the Bianca Devin story. So. Okay. C catch me up quickly. Um, all I did was just read like the first paragraph. <laughs> okay. So, Bianca Devins, age 17, was murdered by uh, Brandon Clark, age 21. One, I don't, I know some states the age of consent is 17. I don't, under 18, I'm not going to talk to it. Under 20, I'm not going to date it. Yeah. I don't, I, I think under a certain age, you're too, you're too young. But well, apparently, they had been talking on social media for several months. The relationship had gotten very intimate, according to police. And then uh, Brandon Clark actually murdered. And posted photos of the murder on Discord, uh, making fun of her uh, followers. Apparently, she had a very large social media following and um, was taunting her uh, followers with this murder. And unfortunately, there was quite a lot of toxicity that followed. Uh, there was one person that quoted, this pleases me, which is very depressing to see and very disgusting as well. Nobody should be happy about any kind of murder, especially when it comes to this. Um, the reporter had tried to move on from the social media into a more sexist, feminist, and I'm, I'm using those words poorly, uh, so forgive me for that, but it was more, it was more played out to be a a uh, gender specific problem with male toxicity and masculine so, toxicity. Something, one of the things that I, because when I looked over this story to begin with, um, I saw the mention about incels in it. And basically, what, in, what an incel is, if, if um, you're not, you don't know what that term is or you, you haven't heard of it, an incel is someone who's involuntarily celibate. So effectively, it's a dude who can't get laid, right? Um, for whatever reason, it just, you know, he's ugly, he's this, he's that, for whatever reason it is, you know, every single time he talks to a woman, he's not able, you know, to score. Um, and there's a big movement, there's groups of people who follow this kind of, this topic and all that stuff, they, you know, and all that, and they feel as though they're, o they're owed, I mean, reparations, rep, rep, Reparations, reparations reparations um for this because you know women treating them like crap like um 
There was a story a while back. One of the dudes who did a who was who shot up a college, um, a year or two ago. Um, he was one of the incels. You know, it's you know he proclaimed his love for a woman, and you know she turned him down, and then he was just tired of it, and he went and shot up the school. Um, and that's kind of what this is. And I, I believe that that had something to do with this entire situation. It's, you know, a dude who considered himself an incel, but he managed to get into a romantic relationship with this woman. And then he kind of went and got his revenge because of it. You know, all of well, the, according to Utica police, uh, Sergeant Michael Curley, he also believes the murder was posted to acquire fame. Normally people, when they murder somebody, they don't just flaunt it out there, but he believes that the uh, Clark did it to become famous and flaunting his crimes. However, uh, according to Evelyn Strat Moen, author of the 2018 study showing men aggression, men show aggression when advances are uh, rejected, stated flaunting crimes is not a new so, uh, new behavior. However, social media has given those behaviors a new form uh, uh, with greater amplifications. Uh, she also states that a part of masculinity is connected to your social status. If that's been threatened or lowered in some way, a man will try and regain it. And unfortunately, many of the abusers uh, believe what they are doing is just and right. And they think that people are, a lot of people are going to sympathize with what they're doing, believing that they're teaching somebody a lesson. And if you believe this, don't follow us. I, I want nothing to do with you. If you think what these people are doing is right or just or thinking that teaching a woman a lesson for rejecting a man is correct, do not be here. As harsh as that sounds, I, I don't care. It's not right. It's... Unfortunately, I got some flack about this case actually a couple days ago. I was talking on uh, Facebook with, I had posted on a, a friend's comment about the murder and uh, one of her friends actually became a little aggressive with me saying that I need to personally do something and we as men need to stand up. And I said, look, not all men are the same. And that's what pushed the argument more is, well, if not all men are the same, y'all need to be doing something. Well. I'm sorry, but a lot of people aren't just going to go out there and be Superman and run around and do everything they can. I personally, you know, this is the best I can do is bring up the discussion of it. But I can't just run out nowadays and start slugging people because they groped a girl wrong. I, you know, I just had back surgery a couple months ago. I, what do you expect from me? Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, along with that, it's also the upbringing of the child. I mean, you started getting rid of spankings and people nowadays are becoming more and more disrespectful and less respectful of people's opinions and topics. My dad used to whoop my butt. I remember one day he beat my ass in a church parking lot because me and my sister didn't get along on the way there. But now I suffer from a disease called respect for others. Mm -hmm. But as a one, you know, if, if you see a guy around and you think he's going to cause problems, Find somebody, find the bouncer, call the police, do something. You should also not have fear well, to come forward about something like this. And and a lot of a lot of bars and stuff like that are are you know doing things now to be able to help protect women in situations like that. You know, they'll they'll put certain drinks on their their menu to where if the woman orders them, it's you know. In Call me an Uber. Call the police. Yeah. Get the bouncer. There's there's they've got a list of stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. unfortunately, another thing that I was going into on this topic, um, uh, due to a lot, a lot of the news nowadays is targeting men, uh, specific, a lot of it's targeting straight white males. Um, you know, you see reparations for slavery, you see, uh, you know, men are trash, men are pigs, men are doing this. You see so many stories coming out nowadays and they focus so much on the bad and, it's not just a, a male problem. This goes, you know, there's toxicity everywhere. I've seen stories about women spitting on men and then shouting at the men, hit me, punch me, touch me so I can call the police and have you thrown in jail. There was the story about the woman running around on trains and dumping bottles of bleach in men's laps to stop them from manscaping. Um, 
So it goes both ways. Unfortunately, with men, it tends to become more of an aggression problem. And yes, I do think men need, need, need to get in the face of another man that is doing something wrong. But a lot of the men you s who see something going on are either very antisocial, they're an introvert, they're, n they're not looking for confrontation or something like that. So they close their eyes, they, they brush it mm -hmm. off. It's not, it's not my problem. If you see something, say something, people. It's, uh, we talk about toxic. One of the themes I'm seeing with our shows is we talk about toxicity a lot. We've mainly t uh, focused on video games. This story actually brings forth that it's not just online. There's not just keyboard warriors. Excuse me. It's it's becoming more and more of a problem it, nowadays, and uh, it just, needs to be handled yeah, just a lot better than we are. Because you have the toxicity in the veteran. Every community has their toxicity, you know, and it's going to happen. We just need to focus on trying to, instead of trying to focus on why we're upset or offended from someone, um, but it's like... Uh, Instead of trying to focus on why we're upset or offended by someone, let us focus on, you know, how we can fix that, I guess, for what I'm trying to say. Um, I was going to hit up one of the comments here. So, uh, Julie Little Spud Remains she says, it happens all too often. She says, her aunt's ex-husband stuck a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger right in front of his second wife, all because they had separated and she wouldn't take him back. So, I mean, and that's a, that's a pretty, you know... And that's a that's a pretty that that goes on along oh. onto a lot of other things. I mean, you know, I, we 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 all face down times. I mean, we all know that I've been going through a pretty hard time recently. And you know, there thankfully, thank God, I had people like Cameron and the dudes from BV Nation and all that stuff because who knows? What I do want I do want to actually give BV Nation a, a shout out real quick. BV Nation, I appreciate you all getting back to me. I'd messaged uh, messaged them, thanking them about Athens. BV Nation is a very cool community. I, as soon as they responded to me, I, they, they were very chill, very relaxed, and uh, they were prompt, very um, accepting of everybody. And I I wound up thanking them for taking. They drove four hours to go and take care of Athens when he was going through something. So again, that goes back to what we were stating earlier. The veteran community needs to uh, outreach more. And I think this is one of the areas that we should hit hard on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, veterans have different trainings. You know, we always have the mandatory training about something going on. Uh, you know, DWI's wife, uh, something going on with somebody's wife. We actually had a situation on board. Um, I can't go into too much detail about it, but uh, information got leaked and the command basically wanted the husband away from his wife and the wife was straight loony at that point in time. Um, I told, I warned everybody before this story started, it was going to bring a lot of controversy. Um, so it's, it's a very sad case and unfortunately it's our next one is not too pretty as well it's it's not as bad so we're lightening up and then we're gonna get way 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 light after that so don't oh, worry yeah this this we wanted to end on this as far as our uh sad stories and depressing stories go solely for the fact that we did not want to start off and then lose people following because of this controversy and then we're tr we're going to try and pick pick the mood back up afterwards but as i stated we as a community need to, if you see something again, say something, say something, say something. Don't be that guy that just brushes it off and says, it's not my problem. It's if you see it, it's now your problem. So make it your problem, do something, get attention. You know, I'm not saying put yourself in harm's way and I'll, br I'll bring that up in the next story, but I do believe that uh, the problems are going to continue getting worse and worse as it stands. All right. And so, and social media does not help at all. It doesn't. I mean, and I'm I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna say my opinion. Social media is kind of, uh, t like a tender keg as far as a lot of this goes because of the ability to establish clicks, the ability to have those groups, and then the the or, or even find somebody online and just send them threatening posts or mm -hmm. or something. I mean, just. 
the harassment, a lot of what, uh, going into the article, a lot of what we see nowadays is uh, a lot of keyboard warriors getting out there and just threatening people. And a lot of it, a lot of the times it just ends at threats. But we shouldn't be doing that anyways. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be a toxic person that gets a hold of somebody just to, to down, put them down or something, guys. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not healthy behavior and it's only going to progress to worse behavior the guy the i i'm hoping that clark rots in jail for what he's done and uh hopefully we can kind of keep you all updated on that one i don't want to touch too much more on that one because i know it is a sensitive uh sensitive topic but again so, this is move, it's, move. it's nothing we want to talk about but it's something we need to talk about yeah Exactly. So we're going to move. I already got the new, the next story put into the um, chat and we're going to move forward into this story right here. Oh, excuse me. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this next story is girl punched unconscious after she tells man, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. So Gabrielle Wall, I, I've, I've, I'm such a horrible person. I actually have to read articles in order to actually. Okay. Freaking... Well, I'll let you read up on it. I've actually got some stuff. Well, pulled out. I've, I've, I read the article, a lot of it, but I still have to just freaking go over the article in order. To, I don't know. But so Gabrielle Wash, she was, she was 18. And so she was approached by a dude who, you know, three, three dudes, three dudes. Okay. Yeah. She was approached by three dudes who found her attractive and they were wanting to talk to her. She told him, you know, she was trying to avoid them, just trying to move away, just trying to kind of politely, um, and, you know, stop the conversation, just get, get away from it. But they kept mm -hmm. following her. They kept hitting on her. They kept doing all that stuff. <laughs> and eventually she just got fed up with the fact that they're not listening. So she told him, hey, I'm not interested. And then she was there with another, um, the dude, the person's name was a Kyle. dude's name, Kyle, but I guess it was a female. So, but, um, yeah, so. Uh, I thought it said it was a male. I thought they said it was a male. I don't know. It sounds from what it I read. Strange vague it was kind of vague but it sent to me it sounded like she was a um she was a uh it was a female the other one i don't know um we'll see. get y'all's take on it um yeah it said uh, my friend kyle and he hit so after she had said the two I'm girls kind of... received help from volunteers okay so, okay. Yes, so it, her name is her name is kyle but it's a female but either way what happened was um she told the dudes I'm not I'm interested. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not interested. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not interested. They got mad and they punched, punched her in the face yeah. and knocked her out instantly. Yep, knocked her out instantly. And her eye was, I mean, her eye is messed up. Her eye is fucked. Really it said bad. that she's got a blood clot in her eye. When she opens her eye, all she can see is yellow. I think it also said it uh, tore a muscle in her eye. Yep. And she said when she woke up, she was on the floor and three of them had jumped on her friend as well. So. And they went to uh, they went they went and got help from volunteers at Village Angels Community Safety Group who provided them with basic first aid. Um, they they tried to get an ambulance, but she said she you know it was a two hour Dude. wait. Where the fuck do you? I mean I mean this is in England, but how is it a two hour wait for a goddamn ambulance? Yeah, that's that's when I I actually wound up in the ER uh, a couple weeks ago. My back had started spasming again. And it took literally, I think, five minutes for an ambulance to get to me. Yeah, see, and, and that's the standard. How is it going to take two hours for an? I mean, it's uh, frankly, it's not a critical situation, I guess, in that. In that, but I mean, anytime an ambulance is called, it's it's code, isn't it? I, that's what I believe. I mean, so, it should be priority. I, I have no. We didn't get any details about how far away the uh, hospital was or anything like that. Um, but again, this is not a story we want to talk about, but we need to bring up for the fact that this shows toxicity is getting worse and worse, and men right now are getting such a bad reputation. And, and I cool, and it, you know, this goes back to the story about that the soldier earlier that was. You know, clearly, I mean, I mean, in this chick, she's gorgeous, first of all, but it's like, you know, why? And I mean, this like this was in England and it doesn't it doesn't actually mention anything about the race or anything regarding the people, because I mean, I know they're oh, God, this is going to be insensitive as fuck. Um <laughs> My apologies ahead of time. I know there are a lot of Muslim people living in, uh, uh, 
England and all that stuff, you know, Muslim and Indian type people that are living in England. And I know that at times a lot of them can be very, very pushy as far as that stuff goes. And that's kind of the way they follow things. It, you know, is that possible what this may be like a Muslim or an Indian person that was trying to hit on her and, you know, they felt this. We, yeah, we have no, uh, we have no information on that yet. We know that in some communities and backgrounds that yes, if a woman rejects, it's, it can be cause for aggression and stuff like that. We don't believe that here. None of us do. None of us should. Um, and we definitely, again, need to step up for stuff like that. Gentlemen, take any rejection you get with a grain of salt, maybe a little tequila, Get on with life and move on. You know, if anything, you've got old reliable. Take care of yourself with yourself. Don't push anybody into an uncomfortable situation. One of the stories I read, and it was, this was a while back, there was a, uh, a group of girls that went to a gay bar. And uh, some guys go there that are straight, and they, they hit on the women regardless. And one of the guys, apparently this man was huge. I'm talking like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and just a big old boy. And uh, he would he would prowl around. The girls originally concerned with what he was doing. They saw him. He was circling the dance floor. And these guys came up to the girls. They started grinding on him and started trying to dance. And they kept trying to push him back. Get off. Get off. We're not interested in another situation like this. This guy went up to the guys that were dancing on them and started grinding on the guys that were harassing <laughs> the girls. Absolutely hilarious story to see. It's one of those things that, again, brings back faith in humanity. Love seeing it, funny as hell, but it got them gone. It got them out of that bar. Yeah. So, All right. I mean, yeah, he was a little creepy doing that, but as soon as they realized what this guy was doing, they got with him. They bought him drinks. They talked to him, talked to him about it. And they, he had uh, come to find out he had actually been talking and stating that, um, you know, I do this regularly. I'm here a lot of the times uh, to protect. From situations like this, there are constantly guys that come into the, uh, into the bar trying to hit on the women, and it's uh, unreciprocated, and all, all I try and do is get rid of them. So, right. good, good on him. Uh, I would love to see more stories like that. If y'all find them, again, please, please, please be more interactive. We want to, we want y'all to reach out to us. We open up everything. Facebook, Instagram, I don't have a Twitter, so. I have Twitter. So You're SOL on that one. Uh, you know, you, we post our Discord link constantly. Discord is free to use, people. Please free to come use. and join. We have all these channels where you can come and talk, interact, post some of your stories. We have a meme channel, for God's sakes. If you just want to jump in and laugh, by yeah. all means. I mean, if you want to BS with us when we're playing video games, you can ask me, Athen, Josh, um, Gabe, even when we're gaming, we don't shut up. Yeah, we, like, we're unless we, unless Josh we never stops talking. Josh never stops talking, <laughs> especially he's at, after he's a few Except for when he's on the show. Yeah. Uh, what the oh, hell's going on here? Call? Yeah, we do have a call. All right. Um, but by all means, people, reach out color. to us. We are trying to get y'all more interactive. Hello, caller. May I ask who you are? Hello? Oh, this is Twilight. What's up? So, um, hey, how's it going, it's going all right. You can hear me, but you can't hear Cameron. Um, what did you I have to say? I say hi. <laughs> Cameron oh, says hi. I was just saying hi. <laughs> okay. Hey, well, hey, we got some interaction. I'll happy take weekend. it. Happy, up, happy weekend. Not much. Um, we're just hit, sitting here. We're, we're going to be moving on from the, from the, the story that we're on because that's, you know, that's a little much for some people to take and handle. So I um, saw our numbers. For our followers drop from 10 to 7. I know we warned you all at the beginning. I, again, I am very sorry we had to go over this. I didn't I don't want to fully I want I want to bring light to the Hi. issues so, that sorry, are going on, right but I don't want to I don't want to shit in anybody's weeds. <laughs> yeah, I, on... I, I want to grow this show, and I, and you know, after I got back, uh, after Athen asked me, I mean, being more interactive and stuff. When I started hanging out with Athen, it was very hard to get a hold of him, very hard to, to talk. But now, you know, I mean, he's in, we're in contact almost every day. He's become a lighter, happier person. So I loved, I love, love, love doing this show. I fully believe in 
what we have going on. And, uh, you know, I didn't watch many of the beginning shows, but I, I'm trying to push it towards more of a uh, news start. You know, we want to get the important stories out early and then get into the video game topics and stuff like that and the movies and entertainment stuff. I got I to gotta so, figure out how to make it to where callers can hear him. <laughs> so yeah. what did you have so to say? We, we, we are trying to get things flowing more smoothly, ladies and gentlemen. So we, we appreciate those who come in and, and watch with us. What did you, what did you have to say have to say there, Twilight? Oh, nothing. I was going to go to the VFW for hot dogs and hamburgers and thought I'd say hi and luck on your show and all that. It's happy Saturday. Woo woo. Woo woo. Well, thank you very much for calling in. We appreciate it. All right. You take care, guys. You as well. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Again, folks, if you want to jump in and just say hi like that, we would appreciate any interaction. Our show is already doing better than the last few shows. We've already, we're already up to 20 shares. I love seeing the show grow. That's so awesome. We appreciate everything y'all are doing for us. <laughs> we love having you here. We love your interaction. We, again, please feel free on any platform you can find us. Interact. Yes, definitely. All right, so I'm going to go grab myself a beer. Our next story is Chris Pratt. If you want to get it started on that while I'm going to grab a beer, we can do that. I can. I'm going to check the weather real quick because it looks like it's finally moving the hell away from me. Sweet. It is. I should not lose power again, folks. That's good news, for, good news for me and probably bad news for you if you don't like listening to me at this point in time. But so. So our next story is about Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is being labeled a white supremacist. If you know Chris Pratt, he did Guardians of the Galaxy. He's been in uh, Parks and Recreation, been in the um, more of the movies recently. Um, he's becoming a bigger and bigger actor constantly, and I, he's hilarious. Love watching him. Chris but Pratt's he wore, awesome. He, Chris Pratt is awesome. But he wore a shirt with you know the snake. It has the snake. It says, "Don't tread on me, boy." <laughs> the Gadsden so flag, also known as yeah. the Navy Jack. Yep. Uh, it we flew that thing all the time. Yep, it's a, it's a beautiful flag, and it was imposed over the American flag, and uh, it was the Yahoo. Oh, let me. F I don't want to say it wrong. Yahoo Movies United Kingdom labeled him the white supremacist mm -hmm. for wearing the shirt, and they put a tweet out there saying, "This is why uh, people don't like Chris Pratt." I'm sorry. But I love Chris Pratt. Yahoo, uh, Yahoo UK was quoted saying, gun-toting supporter of the second... Uh, er, in, July, in a July 16 article stating he was wearing a controversial symbol adopted by the Tea Party and gun-toting supporters of the Second Amendment. You are damn right. So if I am a gun-toting supporter of the Second Amendment. If, and if Chris you, Pratt is a good man for wearing this damn shirt. And I love seeing some actors in Hollywood still give a damn about the United States. So if you if you guys don't know what the <laughs> what what the Gadsden flag is, is it's a yellow flag and it's got a snake on the ground. Can you get that pulled up real quick? And it says yeah, I can get that. Hold up. Okay, go so, ahead and get that pulled up. Um who I think it was Ben Shapiro was quoted uh, yeah, Ben Shapiro editor in chief of the Daily Wire was stated. May, uh, he was talking about the uh, Yahoo UK saying this is pure idiocy. This should not have been an article. They're making fun of an actor who's supporting his beliefs. We see a lot of actors, singers, actresses, and ooh, uh, you know, all these popular people posting the beliefs. You know, we have uh, kneeling. We have in sports. You have people posting their their beliefs everywhere. I don't think you should. Go in detail. As a person in the media, you should not impose your beliefs on others. People are very influenced by what you do and what you say, especially at a young age. And uh, just because somebody likes you, they're gonna they're gonna want to follow what you believe. Um, Chris Pratt was just wearing a T-shirt. I see absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, hell, look at me and Athen right now. We both have on the. Uh, Grunt style t shirts with the American flag on the arms. So, you know, we're going to support, we're going to wear stuff we believe in. And uh, this goes back to the Nike article we had last week, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just because you don't like something doesn't mean just throw it away. I mean, I still listen to Eminem, and apparently he came out as very liberal a while ago. I don't he's, read into any of that. 
So. Well, it's it's he's anti-Trump. I don't know if he's so um, real liberal because he is um, he's he's a gun supporter. He supports guns. He supports all that stuff. He, you know, he has. I think he's more centrist than he is liberal. Um, but yeah, he he's anti-Trump though. Period. But I mean, honestly, if I'm if I'm frank, I'm myself. I, yeah, Hi, I Frank. Think, I'm Cameron. <laughs> Yeah, well, what's up, dude? But no, if I'm frank about it, honestly, I did prefer, um, I did prefer Trump over Clinton. Yeah, most certainly. Um, however, comma, I really wasn't all that keen on President Trump becoming president, but I would have rather him than Clinton. Uh, it's you know. the lesser of two evils. <laughs> and Trump's actually been following up on a lot of his policies. I have to yeah, end that. I agree with that. So, but the pictures I just popped up, the first one, the yellow one, that's the oh. Gadsden flag. Um, and that's the, the traditional Gadsden flag. That's been around since, uh, the, um, uh, um, 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 Revolutionary War. You know, it was a flag that was used during the Revolutionary War for that reason. Don't tread on me. That was the, the battle cry, right? And then, um, it was adopted as the red and white flag with the snake on it that you saw secondary. That's the Navy Jack, which is the Gadsden flag, but, um, that's how we fly it on board ship. You got the red and white Stripes in the background with the snake on it that says "Don't tread on me," and we fly that on the bow of the boat. So um, he has the the photo of Chris Pratt wearing his T-shirt is actually posted on is the uh, link. It's, okay. I, it's a beautiful shirt, so check it out. Um, again, we try and avoid getting too political on the. Show. Oh yeah, there's a okay. Let me there. I saw that one too. Um, it was hold on. Yeah, there it is. I'm looking. I just looked right at it. It's well, well, I, was, I, saw, I actually stuff. saw that picture. I don't know if I can yep. save it though. But fucking cue me. Well, while while you fiddle with that, our next story is very, very quick. Very. I can't find another one. Point. But to okay. the point, it's just uh, July seventeenth, uh, nineteen eighty nine. The B two uh, Spirit bomber was created and took its first flight. So we have the footage of the birthday celebration. It, folks it is awesome they've got night views of it they have the the green night vision going on they have day uh the footage from back then we have current footage it's awesome to watch um i mean that's really the gist of the story is just watch the video tell yeah, us what you think about it 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 looks insane so feel free to comment and share that one around all right so there's there's that link for the um for the b2 uh, and all that stuff uh yeah there's not a lot of story involved in it. it's a video so yeah that's, <laughs> um, that's literally what it was i mean we had another quick story like that but i you know i mixed that one it was just a youtube video and i wouldn't really go too much in detail on that one so um again um, uh going back to one of our previous shows uh we're talking about green energy again however this is not so green energy talking about wind turbines so there currently right now there are 14,000 wind time wind turbines that are going left with no maintenance, no upkeep and stuff like that. And they're just rotting and rusting and corroding. And now they're they're going to start leaking their oil and uh, whatever lubricants they have in them and they're everywhere and uh, Obama actually had uh, several plants placed overseas. Unfortunately, the wind turbine energy costs more energy to put them up than it actually than they actually produce so right now a lot of them are just being abandoned and left oh, because so they because weren't the, they weren't as green as they thought they were going to be they're not as effective and now the, the idea of green energy is fading away and a lot it's it's very similar to what like solar panels if they get left abandoned they're just going to sit there and rot mm -hmm. and you know this article goes into detail and discussion about you know Environmentalists demand all these green ideas, green energy, green, 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 green. But when it comes to cleanup and the failure, they're nowhere to be seen. Well, see, um, with, you know, you mentioned solar. Solar is generally in, I mean, not even generally, I mean, just straight up. It's a lot less expensive to like create to develop to build to install and all that stuff mm -hmm. and it's also a lot easier to maintain and a lot less expensive to maintain i mean you know with a windmill you know you have to have a 
yeah, wind turbine, windmill, whatever you want to call it. Um, what you you have to have, you know, people, lots of them, that get paid a lot of money, who are willing to effectively free climb to the top of these wind turbines, and you know, deal. There's with... actually a uh, there's a photo of when a wind turbine failed; it caught fire. Yep. And they were on the front of the turbine, and uh, it was two of them up there. And they knew they were going to die. They the last photo we had of them was them hugging. Yeah. And uh, um, it was a very depressing photo because wind turbines are not as effective and not as safe as people want them to be. Exactly. I mean, they, they're. Expensive. I mean, neither neither are solar panels to an extent, but I mean, they do produce the more energy. Um, there, I saw an article about a year ago. They're creating a glass, just a glass, no black backing, so it's not going to produce the heat like the okay. traditional solar panels. But this glass will also produce energy uh, equivalent to uh, current solar panels. So uh, hopefully we'll see more of those uh, within the near future. Hopefully we can find the article on that one again and get more information for you all out there. But um, all right. So um, of the topics that we have <clears throat> remaining, we have about 15 minutes. What are the ones that we want to hit on the most? Uh, all of these are going to be really quick. <clears throat> okay. Um. Coming up, uh, Insider Claims, Netflix renewed The Witcher for three seasons. Okay, so so we're going to have a Witcher TV show, but they also state there's actually not going to be a villain. So, so we'll see so how that plays out. Let's, let's, let's give our viewers that we have right now a little bit of insight into this. So basically what The Witcher is, The Witcher is a video game. Um, I don't and remember... Books. Huh? Books, don't forget. Oh, yeah, also, they do have books. The, the series is going to be based off of the books. They're not wanting to get into the video uh, the video games. They're wanting to try and keep more off of the books themselves. So okay. we've seen video games turn into movies, and they failed. That's another one of our topics. And we've seen books turn into movies, and we get a lot of backlash okay. from the books turning into movies. But typically when the books turn into movies, they turn they come out better than the video. And this isn't this isn't a movie either. This is a TV show yeah, on Netflix, me, show. and it's been in like like we said. There's a let me link the article that's saying about it being um, renewed for three seasons. Go oh, ahead. No, wait, and post, I, already, uh, I already did. Both, you got both the articles posted. Um, just the one about three seasons. I'll post the other yeah, one right now. I mean, I, I combined both of these so, topics together. But basically, what this is, The Witcher is a really. I mean, I've never read the books, um, but it's a really really good game. It's got three games, Witcher 1, Witcher 2, Witcher 3. And basically what it is, is you're a dude, Geralt Rivera, um, and you're what's called a Witcher. You're a monster hunter, right? And he has... Ooh, Rob a, Zombie's got a new movie coming out. Ooh. Effectively what it is, is he's got magical powers, which only some in the... It's, you know, kind of a medieval-ish type game. And there's a civil war going on, a big war, big battle, and all that stuff. And Geralt, he's a warrior... And he, you know, the the Witchers, they're kind of hated, but they're adored for, you know, multiple different reasons. And I told you we were, I told you we were going to drop. We went from seven to three once we got into the video game conversation. Oh, yeah. Right to change. Yeah. Well, this is a video game, though, but um, I mean, it is, but it's, it's not. Entertainment. It's entertainment, not so much news. People aren't as much interested <clears throat> in that. I understand. So Jenny's asking for a Discord link. Let me get that to her real quick. But um, keep. Do you know much about the the Witcher games and all that stuff? Generally, The Witcher. Unfortunately, no. I've never had a chance to play them. I think they're in my wish list. Okay, I've played um, all of them. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't played um The Witcher three all the way through yet. But it's a fucking great game. Um, <laughs> it's they're they're all one player. It's a one player RPG type game. They're they're it's great. It's fun. Um, and. You know, great storyline, great, great story. I mean, based off books, so obviously um, it's going to have a good story to it. Um, but, in, and like I said, it's you, the, the, the concept of the games is there, and even with the games, there's not really an overall villain. You know, someone that you are trying to overall defeat, I suppose, because through most of the games, basically what it is, is you're a monster hunter and you know when people drown they become a drowner and they're a monster in the water and they'll come out so anytime you're around water there's going to be monsters um 
after battles, there's other monsters that come through and eat corpses of the dead from the battle, and you know, it's just you, you, sounds like it has a lot of traditional fol folklore behind it as well. It does. There are there are actually stories, um, the original Grim uh, stories and the original fairy tales were very bleak and dark, and mm -hmm. I <laughs> Disney has put a very bright light on. Uh, some of these stories, and I, I love ruining childhoods. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> some of the, some of the stories that actually happened. That's why I find the Grim TV TV series uh, very enjoyable because it does portray the monsters as the original, or well, the fairy tales as the original monsters they were, but it's a more uh, current fairy tale, so to speak. But it's like, I watched the trailer for the Witcher series today, I believe it was, and it looks like it's going to be good. The dude they've got to play Geralt, um, or Geralt, Geralt, I, I've always called him Geralt, but um, the guy they got to play Geralt, he freaking fills the character well. Um, and I, I kind of don't like, because, so throughout the series, you have Geralt, which is the main character, then you have um, a... A sorceress named Yennefer that is kind of like Geralt's love interest, but then there's another chick that's also kind of one of his love interests. And I'm gonna put it out there right right now: the games are definitely not um, for kids. Like, there's full on straight up nudity and sex scenes in the games. Right? It's like a rated R game. All right. <laughs> So, okay. like, well, um, we've got ten, we've got ten minutes, so we're gonna move on from this right. topic. I'm gonna yes. hit the next. I'm gonna hit the next few real quick. I'm gonna leave two two kind of open for a, a short discussion. Right, but cur currently, Tom Cruise just released the trailer for Top Gun Two, uh, supposed to be released sometime in 2020. Uh, we have another video game movie coming out for Space Invaders. I don't know how that one's gonna play out. The video game was very <laughs> basic. You go go back and forth and you shoot up. Even Futurama made fun of that game. Um, it might Seagate, be like Battleship. Eh, maybe, but uh, we have four new uh, Xbox games coming out to the pass holders on PC. Uh, Night Call, Banner Sog, Killer Instinct, DE, and For the King. I've never heard of those. I was For excited to see... Yeah, For the King. Hmm. I've never heard of those. Um, I was excited originally. I thought we were going to have why did it, coming why, out. Why did that article have Battletoads in the picture? I have no idea. <laughs> um, and then Grand Theft Auto, uh, the online casino is getting an update uh, for a lot of the casino for the Vinewood casino, uh, casino to finally open up. The casino is known as the Diamond, and they're offering a bunch of new ways to play. The... Uh, one topic I really wanted to get into is uh, the Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the microtransactions. Mm -hmm. um, seeing more and more games come out with these microtransactions, especially mobile games, they have real no limit. I mean, you can spend money all day long. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody actually calculated the total cost. They say you can play the game without buying anything, but you know there are players out there that are diehard, and yeah. they want to have absolutely everything for the game. So are these all cosmetic? Are these all cosmetic purchases, or are I, these... I, I think a lot of them were cosmetic. Okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get a lot. They didn't really go, or they went into ex like expansion packs and stuff like that. Uh, so it sounded like some of the storyline, you you get a little bit more of the storyline mm -hmm. if you paid paid money for it. But the total wound up being almost four hundred dollars, three hundred ninety seven dollars and forty six cents USD. Jesus was Christ! Total, was the total cost to play this game? I have a, a game I play on my phone, and I mean, I constantly, like, goof up, and I'll spend a couple bucks here and there, and I mean, looking back, I really wish I won it, because it is very addicting, but it helps push you so much further through, but microtransactions are becoming a cancer, and costing people more they, and more money than they They kind of, they kind of are, because, I mean, even me, like, between Rocket League and... Um, Rainbow Six, I've probably spent, and this isn't even including purchasing the game itself, I've probably spent, uh, close-ish to a hundred bucks on the game, you know. Because you get all these adventure passes, expansion passes, yep. you know, all these things that are supposed to make, you know, and most of them are cosmetic, which is cool, but I don't think you should have to spend real money. I would rather see somebody spend, that spends the time to, uh, earn them 
like old MMORPGs, you spent enough time, you got some badass gear, you got some badass armor, you looked cool. And that told players, hey, I've played this game a long time. But nowadays, it's you can spend, oh, spend $5.99 and we'll give you this whole pack. And it's a lot of it's cosmetic. Some of it might be money for the game. Um, but there, it's just game, gaming companies are getting more and more into just bleeding people dry than getting people to actually enjoy their series or games or what have you. And, Drop a full game and make it freaking substantial and, you know, beneficial for the community to play. And I think yeah, that's going to be one of the best full, games that goes over. Avoid doing the microtransaction, all these adventure passes, and focus solely on making a game worth having. Yeah, you know, and it's been a, it's become a trend in gaming recently over, you know, the past few years that – most companies they're dropping incomplete games and making us pay 60 bucks for it and yeah. then like a week within a week after release you got to go and download a freaking 20 gig freaking update for the game so they can fix the problems that they didn't fix beforehand like More dlc like look at civ 5 civ 5 Civiliza civilization 5 i love playing the game mm -hmm. but they come out with a new dlc constantly oh yeah and it makes the game. Well, I like having the huge maps on there, and I like playing the game because mm -hmm. of the DLC I had. I actually got lucky, and it, it all went on sale. But I don't think you should have to buy that much DLC. Turning a thirty dollar game after you know it's it's been out a few years. It was like fifty nine ninety nine when it came out, and then it drops down to like thirty bucks. But with all the DLC it has coming out, it puts it back up to sixty bucks. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with like DLC and like expansion packs and stuff like that. I'm okay with that because you know a game I've never like played Skyrim. A, a, I played Skyrim, but like a game like Civilization VI, you know, and all that stuff. The game itself, because they're not a game that drop. It's not a you know AAA title that drops a new title every year, right? Yeah. Um. You know, their games they take years to develop, so. They're the first portion of the game, they drop that and all that stuff. And then a year to two years in, they'll drop their first expansion pack or their first, you know. Um, uh, but those those are more acceptable to spend money on mm -hmm. because they expand the whole game. Yeah. It's not a cosmetic, uh, cosmetic thing. Like, they'll throw in new characters, new maps, uh, new uh, personalities, uh, new ways to build your cities. They'll they'll change some stuff up. And it's like so, games like for for a really good example is like Fallout seventy six, right? Um, could have been an amazing game, right? But what they did is they did it wrong. They dropped that game as a full on you know title drop. Right, you know, it was released the full game. It, you know, it was supposed to be ready to release game, right? Um, the thing is, it wasn't finished. The game wasn't finished. They didn't put enough effort into it. They didn't take enough time with it. Now, had what they done was drop it as a beta, an open beta, right? You know, a pre-release type thing, and still mm -hmm. charge the sixty dollars for the game. Guarantee you, a lot more people would have bought it, and a lot of more people would have actually continued playing it because. They're not buying it as what is a complete game. They're buying it in a beta, and they're testing it, and they're helping the developers to, you know. Um... Oh, with uh, real quick, uh, touching mm -hmm. back on one of our last cases, R. Kelly's uh, bail got denied. Just oh, yes, R. Kelly, <laughs> his bail was denied. Did we actually talk about – oh, yeah, we did. We talked about that last week. Yeah, so R. Kelly is probably actually going to now be in jail for a very long time, the rest of his life, for – um, child pornography. I saw a fucking fire meme on that. Um, it's like when you've won the, the prison talent show contest six years in a row and find out R. Kelly bail got denied. <laughs> I'm trying to find. There's actually a group of guys that made fun of uh, um, video games and expansion packs and stuff like that. And I can't. I'll have to post it later, post their name later, but they actually made fun of they're They're real funny. I think they're stationed out in the UK or something, but they're absolutely hilarious. And they, uh, they made fun of the games that do these, uh, purchase to play kind of ordeals. Um, 
I'll be, I'll get it and get it posted later. You can watch them. They're absolutely hilarious. All right. Uh, but they, they did a, a skit on a, a guy's running through the forest trying to get into the next area. And an NPC stops him. You go, you can't enter this area unless you pay this. You can't enter this. I mean, oh, it's I've, a ch- I've seen those guys. That's yeah, hilarious. They're, they're, they're absolutely hilarious. They do these videos all the time. I would love – if I could ever get – a guest speaker that was like famous, internet famous, I should say, on here. Those guys would be one of the ones I want to get on here because they are hilarious. We can work on that. Um, yeah. So what what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here? We have we have only a couple minutes um, left, so we need to go do the outros and all that stuff. Um, there we go. I just posted a Discord link there in chat again. If you have Discord or want to download Discord, please do join our server. Uh, I'm we will be in there after this show, so please feel free to step on in. We're it, it, me, Josh, Cameron, uh, a few other people. We're pretty much always online. We're just trying to grow the community. Um, you can always ask, message one of us, and uh, I've got channels set up for several people. I know I need to get a few more for some of our uh, gaming <laughs> friends, um, but that's more of the, the gaming side. Um, but there's, I know me and Athen already have our personal channel set up, and there's a, a group channel you can talk to both of us or any number of us. So feel free to jump on in, and uh, we'll be there in just a couple minutes. All right. Sounds good. So um, with all of that, y'all have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Don't do anything I would or wouldn't do. Don't but drink or drive. Don't drink drive. Don't, you know, do all the smart things. Don't do any of the stupid things. Um, Represent that, yourselves as good vets. Yes. Put that back up. That's a, that's a big key point right there. Um, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Make sure you come back. Check us out next week. Same time, same place. Um, there is a likely chance that here coming up in somewhere in the near future, we may not be able to do the show for a couple of weeks. I got to work on things with Cameron and see if he might be able to produce the show temporarily. Uh, has to do with my living situation going through changes. I'll do what I can, ladies and gentlemen, even um, if it's just 15, 20 minutes, something. Yep. So with all of that, and we have other things that once once I get into a more stable situation, um, we're gonna try and have some like quick shows throughout the week as yep. well. We're gonna try to do smaller shows, smaller you know little bitty things that pop out for you. I have some ideas. I want to try to do a radio show on Spreaker, um, play some music for y'all. Um, lots of plans that I want to freaking put into action, but we got to work into it. We got to work our way there. There. But either way, until all that happens, go ahead, follow me on Facebook, um, Athen Daily. You can go ahead and check that out. Also, check out Ale Train Fighters. It's 1700 somewhere on Facebook. We also have Twitter. It's 1700 somewhere. We have Instagram. It's 1700 somewhere. We have YouTube. It's 1700 somewhere. And I also believe we have an Ale Train Fighters. No, Ale Train Fighters is our YouTube channel. I'm sorry. Um, all that stuff. Just check us out on Facebook, social media, Ale Train Fighters or social media. You'll find us on every single one of them. Um, with that, I'm Athen. I'm Cameron, and it's 1700 somewhere. And y'all have yourselves a wonderful weekend. We'll catch you next week, same time, same place. Make sure you check out all the other shows on VRS, BV Nation, WR Radio, The Bar, um, Bear News, Warrior Wallet, FinVets, uh, um, Sports Church. We have tons of shows, and I don't remember when they are or all the names. Just check out VRS. Check out all the shows. Um, yeah, we'll have a wonderful weekend. We're heading out. Uh, we'll catch you next week, same time, same place. We'll catch you in Discord in a few minutes. Yes. Love y'all faces. See you later.